go back to R, huh? It has been too long since I've been without you, R. So we're going to start by requiring the Dataverse, and as a reminder, here's what we're going to do, or what we're trying to do uh, with our data set. We're trying to convert all instances of A through E to one through five, convert number one to male, number two to female, and number three to non-binary and the gender variable. We're trying to reverse code MSSI one, three, seven, and eight, as well as DEP underscore three and underscore six. We already did all that in the last video. And in this video, we're going to do these two things. We're going to create subscales and we are going to create some scales. S-U-M, not S-O-M-E. And to do that, we're going to need to use the row sums argument, which is a native argument in R. And the cool thing about row sums is it only requires one argument, just a data frame that has a bunch of numbers you need to sum. That's easy. Or is it? Well, let's go ahead and read in the data underscore satisfaction data set linked in the description. And now let's see what happens when we try to do that. Well, first let's go ahead and look at head D underscore original. Okay, well, I already see problems with this, but we're gonna do it anyway. Cause it's gonna highlight, highlight the problem either way. So it says error in row sums D original X must be numeric. Yeah, row sums won't work if you have non-numeric variables in there. They all have to be numeric. So that presents a bit of a problem to us, does it not? Well, what we need to do is we need to select, not rows, but columns. So we need to have a way to tell row sums that we only want to sum the rows that we care about. The columns that we care about. I keep flipping the rows and the columns, my bad. I'm mentally transposing things and I think five of you will get that joke. All right, basic template. So what we are going to do, if we are going to create sum scales, S-U-M, is we're going to go D, pipe, mutate, and then create the variable name for the variable that you're trying to sum. So maybe like uh, depression underscore total or whatever. And then it is equal to row sums. And then within the row sums, you're going to select dot and then the columns. That dot is important when you are within a mutate statement. Um, again, kind of like in the last video, there's a very specific reason why that dot has to be there, but I don't think you need to know it. Just remember to put the dot there. Um, so I have put the things we need to create subscales on up here, as well as the things that we need to create um, some scales, subscales and some scales. I hope I don't mix those two up putting it right there just so it's a little easier for you to see why I'm doing what I'm doing. But I'm going to kind of continue with what I did in the last video. Remember we needed to recode gender as well as all the letters to be numbers. And so I'm going to copy that code and I'm going to just paste it down here. And then I'm going to add the code from this video. And then if I just add a head there, um, I just want you to see what it looks like at this point that over there. Um, that's where we left off last time. Now we're going to add another mutate statement. And, and so I'm going to create a new mutate statement that is separate from the old ones. I will explain why in just a second after I show you how I'm going to create the sum scales. So I'm going to say mutate and then SF underscore A underscore sum. You can call that whatever you want, just something that's descriptive that you'll remember is equal to row sums and then now I'm going to select and I'm going to say dot again that's important and then I'm going to specify the columns that I want to sum across and so here I'm saying SF1, 3, and 7 why those because earlier I said that um, the SF variables the first third and seventh item load onto the SFA um, summative scale and then the second, fourth, and fifth load onto the B scale, and then the sixth, eighth, and ninth load onto the C scale. This data set is entirely made up. I'm just creating a situation where maybe you have a, a scale that measures depression, but then there's subscales that measure different manifestations of depression. That's basically what I'm trying to simulate here. Let's see what happens. I'm just gonna do a head statement there. And that gave me an error. Why did that give me an error? Because earlier I decided to put a head statement there, and so. 
it's having a problem with that. So let me run that again. So if I were to do that, we would see a three new columns, SFA sum, SFB sum, and SFC sum. And if we were to do the math, which I'll go ahead and do it for one of them. So let's see, SFA was one, three, and seven. So if we take one, three, and seven, we got two plus three is five plus two is seven, which is exactly what we get. Just to demonstrate that this actually is summing up those columns. And so um, now back to what I was asking before, why in the world do I have to have a new mutate statement? Well, I'm gonna put it back um, in my effort to explain to you why it's required. And by the way, when I was preparing this video, I had it there and it was not working and I was super puzzled why it wasn't working. But let's uh, think about that and I'll just show you that it's not gonna work. So if we put it within that, it's gonna say, X must be numeric. Why is this happening? Well, you gotta think about what the pipe is passing. Remember when you say, when you specify a pipe statement, it is taking this, whatever is to the left of it, that data set to the left of it, and then passing it through. When you are passing the original data set through at this point right here, before we do the mutate statement, um, all the numbers are A, B, C, D, and E. But of course, we are recoding them, so that's great. But now once we get down to this row sums area, what we are saying in this dot right here, and I didn't explain what it was, it's basically saying the data set that you are passing in. What it's referencing here is the data set as it came in before the mutate statement. And so it's trying to sum SF1, 3, and 7 uh, when at this point up here, it is A, B, C, D, and E. So it can't sum letters. So it's going to throw you an error. So this dot right here is making a reference to the data set that I am passing in. And the data set that I am passing in has letters A, B, C, D, and E. It does not have numbers yet. I create those numbers down here, but by specifying the dot, it's looking at the old data set before it has a chance to be modified. And so what I need to do is I need to take that out of there and then put it in a separate mutate statement. Why? Because once I do this mutate statement, all the letters A, B, C, D, and E are now converted to numbers. And then as I'm passing it in here, this dot now refers to the new modified data set. It's weird. And it's frustrating that it has to be that way, but I see no other way around it. So if you're in a situation where you get X must be numeric and you're banging your head against the ceiling trying to figure out why, try putting it in a separate mutate statement after earlier mutate statements. Um, and so anyway, here's SFA, SFB, and SFC. Let me make sure I didn't forget a parentheses in there. Make sure that'll run without errors, and I think it did. Yes, it looks like it did. And so I'm gonna get rid of that head so it doesn't give us another problem. And so now I'm going to, just to be safe, I actually, if I remember right, this isn't necessary to do this. Um, although, I, no, I think it is necessary because um, if SF underscore total were within here, the SF a sum, SFB sum, and SFC sum haven't been created yet, so it needs to be in the new. So here's a rule of thumb that is probably good practice, but not always necessary, but it's probably a good idea to use it anyway. If you are creating a new variable in a mutate statement, and a later mutate statement requires that new variable, it may be best to put it in a new mutate statement. It's not always required, and sometimes it'll be more code than you need, but it's always gonna be safer. That way you don't run into the errors that, I'm, that I was running into. So I'm going to finish my mutate. So I'm gonna SF total, which is summing the SF A, B, and C. Uh, MSSI total, which is uh, summing up the variable MSSI, and then DEP total, which is, um, again, summing up the depression scores. And if I run all that and just do a head, we see that we have our sum scales here at the end. So we got depression total, MSSI. By the way, I never told you what MSSI means. It's marital satisfaction, survey inventory. I don't remember. 
This is, I, I did a research paper as an undergrad, and for some reason that was the first thing that came to my mind. So MSSI, and then SF stands for social functioning. Not that it really matters for what we're doing, but anyway. So that at that point, we have accomplished everything we we're trying to accomplish. We converted uh, one, two, and three to male, female, non-binary. We converted all the uh, A, B, C's, D's, and E's into numbers, and we have created all the sum scales. So with that, let me review our learning objections. Objections. Do not object to my learning objectives. They're amazing. Let me review my learning objectives. Number one, what row sums does. Again, it just sums up rows in a matrix or in a data frame, whatever. Uh, number two, what arguments row sums requires. All it requires is a matrix or a data frame that has all numeric columns. Number three, how to use row sums within mutate. Again, here is a basic template in R that shows you how to do it. Remember the important thing here is that you need that dot and then Four, why we need multiple mutate statements. I guess you don't need to technically know exactly why. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna quiz you on it per se, but I don't want you to freak out when you run into an error. So if you run into an error, try putting whatever you're doing in a separate mutate statement. So those are our learning objectives. Now what I want you to do is with the same data set, which I use today, which is linked in the description, what I want you to do is to recode the values A, B, C, D, and E to be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then what I want you to do is reverse code MSI, MSSI two through six and depression one through three instead of the ones that I reverse coded. And then finally, I want you to create some scales for SF, A, B, and C, but using different rules. So I think I said A was equal to one, three, and six. So maybe you decide one, two, and nine for your SFA, whatever. Come up with your own rules, I don't care. Let's make it happen, and yeah. I think that's all I'm gonna cover today. Hope you had fun, I had fun. See you next time, peace out.